Welcome to L4D Now. This is the first vodcast in the series. Uh, this match is between DX, formerly known as INX. Uh, now they're rocking the push tags. They have a new sponsor, so this is uh, Team Dynamics playing against Paragon. Paragon recently won the EVGA tournament. So they're a very good team, two very good teams. Very exciting matchup here. Uh, this is more or less a friendly scrim, but both teams are still going for blood. This is going to be a very exciting match. Uh, nothing interesting happened yet. The Boomer died a little early there before the smoke could get that pull. So uh, Kaji misses a high damage balance there. He runs away. He gets damaged pretty badly at the bottom left. You can see the infected health bars. He probably has about 30 health left. So see what kind of attack they're going to get here. Uh, they're most likely going to try to pull the last guy and pounce the two guys going to rescue him. But without the support of that Boomer, they're not going to do too much damage, even if they land everything. That's exactly what they're doing. You see Surgical here. First question you is going to pull. What's going on? The pounce is going to land both perfectly, but they get knocked off because the fourth guy is up and fine, and he's able to knock both the hunters off without taking too much damage because there's no Boomer. So that was a semi-successful attack. They did a little bit of damage there. Paragon here spamming the voice commands. Uh, I'm not sure how serious taking this match, uh, but they are a very good team with a very strong survivor side. And in the past, they've been accused of, uh, let's say, not playing fair too much, uh, cheating accusations because I believe their day of defeat Source team uh, has some sort of uh, cheating accusations as well. But oh, I think there's two different teams. Oh, uh, the Boomer gets that uh, boom up on all four players because someone shoots him. I've uh, got three hunters, one pounces for 25. One misses, surgically it's a pounce. Gonna knock off two hundreds left. Probably gonna reset up for those high damages. Looks like uh, Metal lands an 18 there. Boom, now we got one player in red, one in yellow. Paragon's taking a beating here. It's very nice, boom. Uh, he spawned very close behind that tree. I'm surprised he was able to spawn there. Uh, and obviously they were surprised too as they shot him. And they all got vomited on, and uh, four vomit survivors equals uh, pretty much pounce bait. Now we have the, the tank here. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, these matches, they all run in the cow mod and the cow config, which means the tank spawns every map as well as the witch. Oh, and the boomer gets one person, but it's a green player. So I'm not sure how useful it's going to The pipe bomb goes out from Francis. So this uh, core is not going to be too much of a threat, but the person vomiting on is taking a beating. We have one player down, one smoked, two in red. Two down, actually. Three down. He's always running for a deal life. He's using yellow, taking a hit from the smoker. And we have metal somewhere as a hunter, probably going to try to pounce him and take him down, but the tank's going to make short work of him as the tank probably has about 50% health left. So, a couple more hits, and it's always down. This round's going to be over. You know, the tank does 24 damage per hit, as well as the rocks. Uh, but there wasn't much need for rocks there. It's, it took a beating from uh, those pounces in the field or in the forest uh, before they cross the bridge. So, Aragon going down. First round, BH1. Uh, can't really say too much. It's very hard to fight a tank with tier one weapons and no Molotov support. So, they did the best they could. And they went down with Team INX, or Team DX, or Push, whatever you want to call them. I'll just call them DX. Uh, since most people know them as uh, Team Dynamics. And now we have uh, DX on Survivor. I believe one of their players paused the game to reconnect. As uh, you see at the bottom left, uh, Bill is taking uh, the Bill NPC bodies in the metal spot. Well, the metal comes back and fixes whatever problem he's having. Uh, the only downside of, excuse me, doing a vodcast uh, from a demo perspective is one, uh, you're not able to press tab and see things like the score and the exact health, uh, the items the players have, the Molotovs. So. You have to be very observant to what's going on inside the game uh, from a vodcasting perspective. Uh, you're also unable to hear the in-game chat as most teams use Controllo. So we're not able to uh, hear the chaos and emotion or uh, emotions involved when they uh, get a big attack off or they end up losing. So I'll have to provide that for you. Uh, still just waiting here for Metal to come back. Uh, there he goes, finally joining the game. So we'll get this uh, second round underway. Like I said earlier, uh, since this is our first podcast, no other sites are doing this type of video, uh, this will provide a lot of insight to novice players and league players who aren't able to see these types of games between very high-ranked teams uh, playing left for dead to the maximum level that it's supposed to be played at. 
uh, with coordination. You'll notice in most attacks, the boomer does not go first. Now they usually uh, get the smoker in, uh, to pull first or get a couple of pounces in first as a distraction. Uh, a lot of public players in this game, I hate to say it, but a lot of people who play uh, public games are very terrible at this game and they don't understand the uh, the dynamic of teamwork. They go in for singular attacks and high damage, which is great, but overall that stuff is really not going to fly against competitive teams. Uh, they're just going to shoot you out of the sky if you pounce one at a time. Uh, and after that rant, uh, we finally have a uh, survivor moving out. The metal says he doesn't have a uh, vent, so maybe he's going to be using the in-game chat. And Visceral just said something, but I was talking over him, so he told him to get in vent, I believe. So we're still just waiting here for them to uh, get in vent, having a bit of just issues. I may truncate this Fucking part of the video. Kaji getting a little frustrated there, just telling him to use the end game. It might be good for uh, the first podcast. We get a little insight into how they communicate and how they uh, how they think from a competitive perspective. Either that, or we'll just wait for Metal to figure out how to use vent or how to get the password correctly so I'll probably just go ahead and cut this part of the video out because I'm not sure how much background information I can keep giving on these two teams because there's not much available Kaja uh, a little bit about him one thing he's well known for in the games is his amazing kill stops and what that is is uh, when a hunter comes to pounce him oh I spoke too soon apparently uh, when a hunter comes to pounce, uh, Kaja, what he'll usually do is wait to the very last second with the pump shotgun or the auto shotgun and one shot the hunter knowing it's a kill stop. Kind of ironic there that I said that and then Metal just got pounced for 23. So, maybe he was a little bit off guard there. Maybe his hands weren't even on the keyboard, so. The both teams are getting a little upset. Uh, they're not sure what DX was doing and DX is not sure that... Um, Paragon knew that they were still having some issues there. Oh, so Sergio gets bounced by eight. And now the survivors are 85 health. Excuse me, about 60 health, 95 and 98. So they're taking a bit of a beating because uh, Paragon couldn't figure out that since they weren't moving and shooting that they weren't ready. And which they're still indicating by not moving much. Uh, a little bit about Surgical, uh, the main player uh, who we're watching the perspective from, the leader of Team Dynamics. Uh, he's very well known for uh, his survivor side and recently his uh, compilation videos for Left 4 Dead as well as a podcast which he's recently introduced and which will be keeping updated on left4deadnow.com, l4dnow.com. Uh, Visceral, everyone almost knows him in the game uh, probably as the most prominent hunter. Uh, lots of hunter compilations. I believe he's on part seven now. Uh, just totally insane, although not practical most of the time. Just insane pounces, uh, horizontal wall scaling. What that means is he's climbing a wall, but jumping off of the same wall, pretty much strafe jumping. So instead of pinging off two different walls, you're jumping off the exact same wall while gaining height and distance at the same time and using it to pounce. Uh, it's basically being able to set up for high damage pounce from anywhere. As far as the imagination and skill can take it. Finally have the survivors moving in. Smoker somewhere in the woods. Hunter somewhere to the back right. Sounds like Hunter just missed the high damage pounce. Smoker's still up somewhere. We really only have two players up at this time, so they may be waiting to fully go in. Or that Smoker's gonna wait till the other teammates are up. Like I mentioned earlier, it's pretty much fruitless to just attack one by one, so they're either gonna try to get some high damage here or some coordination. Oh, Boomer spawns up front. Oh, we see a nice melee from Surgical there. It takes out one of the hunters. And Kaja takes it together. I believe he took him out with one of the kill stops, like I mentioned. All survivors get bombed on because they shot the boomer. Kaja gets pulled back, but they're paying attention. They knew he got pulled back. They wouldn't save them. This one gets that kill. We see a melee fatigue on Surgical screen. Uh, the melee fatigue can really be a killer now. Newly introduced in the patch. Really be a pain in the side in a competitive match where meleeing is crucial. You need to get the zombies off. You need to melee those. Uh, those synchronized hunters pounce for high damage. You need to melee those boomers. You need to melee everything. Uh, they got a pipe bomb here. Two pipes. They got, they're about to face the tank up here. Like I mentioned, uh, due to the patch and the calcafig, a tank will spawn on every level, but the tank may not necessarily spawn in the exact same spot. 
Uh, for instance, on maps like Blood Harvest 2, the next level, uh, you may get your tank before you happen to open the door for the crescendo, and you may have to actually open the door for the crescendo. Surgical here, not sure what he's doing, taking a little break. Oh, 200, 300 pounds on the survivor. Surgical is taking.